to say good evening to everyone. Good evening. Giving our praises to God the Father and to his Son who is our Savior and to the third member of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit that will lead our teach our guide. We thank God again for all those that are present on tonight and we thank God for those that are online. The Lord has blessed us with another great lesson on tonight. Subjects is the sun greater than angels. Mm -hmm. And our scriptures come from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through verse 9. Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 9. And again, our subject. The sun greater than angels. And not only is he greater than the angels, uh, because we're going to end our lesson over here. Before he came, there was prophets prophesied for the Father. He's greater than the angels and the prophets. And not only is he greater than the angels, he is superior over the angels. Yes, sir. And let's go a little bit deeper. He also made the angels. Because according to the gospel, everything that was made was made by him. There was not anything made except he made it. So the writer here in Hebrews, who we don't know who the author is of Hebrews, uh, some of them uh, want to say that uh, the Apostle Paul is the writer. Um, we don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out who the writer is since it hasn't been revealed to us. But the thing that we want to learn about is what he's writing about. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in our lesson today, the people that he was dealing with, he was explaining to them that the sun is greater than the angels. Mm -hmm. And there are some questions about was it uh, the Jews? Uh, we know that when they started the new church, we had Jews and Gentiles both made up the church. But I believe he was speaking more to the Jews uh, because of what's said in verse number one. And let's go to it. He said, God, who at sundry time, and that sundry time is simply saying past time, mm -hmm. and in divert manners, which is different manners, spoke in the past time unto the fathers by the prophets. And then right there, since he's talking about their fathers, who, are he, who is he talking about? He's talking about the fathers of the Jewish nation. Yep. And that's what God did. In the past time, what you start saying, that's sundry time, and that's the past time. God spoke in diverse manners. He, he spoke in many different ways uh, when he spoke to the prophets, uh, to the to his people, to their fathers as, as the lesson is teaching us. And that's the fathers of the nation of Israel. He's simply saying that in past time he spoke to them in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some of the prophets he gave vision. Some of them he gave dream. And even when he did with Moses, he dealt directly with Moses. He spoke to Moses. Uh, he spoke to the fathers of Israel by prophet. Uh, some of the prophets, just, just hitting a few, uh, some we're very familiar with. He spoke to Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel. 
and so on and on. God spoke to them, which he was speaking to the nation of Israel. Uh, some of them, as I stated, he gave visions. Some of them he gave dreams. And Moses is the one that we know God was very close to Moses. He, he did directly with him. And this is what makes me believe that he's speaking more uh, to the Jewish listener here. Because the early church had a problem. And the problem of the early church was if they continued, the church was built on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what the churches were built on. But they always wanted to go back to what? Judaism. And this is not, uh, you can't go back. God, we, God people is never intended to go back. We are army marching forward for God. When he dressed us, he, everything that he's talking about putting on the full armor is talking about putting something on the front of you. Why did he put it? Why he didn't put nothing on your back? He got your back. Say it again, Sister Turner. He got your back. He got your back covered. And all he want to do is we victorious. We marching forward. We on a winning team. And when we get through the night, we're going to find out how great this, this lesson really is. About the sun being greater uh, than the angel. And, and I like that word. Superior, and not only is he more superior than he's more superior than anything known to man. Yep. And, and I don't know if it might come up, but when I'm studying this lesson, it, I, I went into some some stuff I had to just leave long, alone. <laughs> I, I really had to leave it alone because you're dealing in territory that it, you can't figure this out of here. And just a little taste there is because he was before there was a beginning. Yep. Yeah. And if you go to try to figure out what was before, we only have knowledge from the beginning. Yeah. Only knowledge we have is starting in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God made heaven. And, but God and his son was here before that. Yeah. So what was, and, that's, and that's the question. Well, what were they doing? Right then, leave it alone. Because you don't know. And now one thing you want to know was done before the word was a slam was slain. Yeah. Because God knew what we were going to do when we got here. Yeah. So I believe that he's speaking to the nation of Israel who sternly wanted to go back into the past. And the fact that they wanted to go back into the past means that they were looking over his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now he said, had in these last days, when Jesus came to the earth, you all, that was the beginning of the last days. Because that is the sixth dispensation. Is in the dispensation of grace and mercy, which is the, the church. Once we step out of this dispensation, we're going to stand in, we're going to go into the millennium period. Jesus came In this dispensation. Now when this dispensation out, we do know who the head of the church is, right? Yeah. So when he gonna take his, this dispensation on the end by him doing what? The Wrapping the church out of here. So they're gonna be, it's gonna be a, 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 a people gonna be dying here on this earth without no Jesus. Because the church is gonna be gone. And if you don't have the church, you don't have Jesus. And the sad thing about it, when the church is out, it's going to get so bad because Satan is going to be in charge down here. Yeah. Yep. And it's going to be bad. Gonna be and the thing that people are running after now is things and money. You can have all the money that you want, but that money is not going to be no good unless you do what? Somebody help you. Unless you take the sign of the peace. It's going to be terrible down here when the church is left up out of here. And this is why he's trying to get the writers to know that in the last day, God is not speaking through no prophets anymore. He's speaking in this verse too. In these last days, he's speaking unto us by his son. 
who he has appointed heir over all things, by whom also he made the world. And that's why I'm telling you that when I started looking back before he made it, just leave that alone. That's too heavy for you, son. And my brother, my sister, it's a sad thing that we are living in this world now. And we're not don't want to give our life to Jesus Christ. And look what it said here. He had in the last day spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed. Heir over all. Jesus is over all things. And anything you want, Jesus is over that. Now, he don't want to just run after things before we go after him. But it's simply, well, and this is my gospel here, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and then these things will come unto you. Now, you can't have a thing before you have him, because if you want things before you have him, then these things have become an out of God. But if you want these things, even this government that we have, Isaiah prophesied that he's going to be the government gonna be on his show. Yeah. And if anybody, and I know I thank God, Sister Turner. Uh, 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 just so happened I got tied up into the oil business and the nerd age machines. Uh, and during Reagan numbers, I got kicked out. Yep. And couldn't get back in until I accepted Jesus Christ. And when I accepted Jesus Christ, I got back into the, that business. And I was able to finish my career. And God took me to height. Mm -hmm. That I had been blocked out. <coughs> because if you started the company, some of the companies I worked for, you start advancing too fast, mm -hmm. they had a way to get rid of you. <laughs> or they had a way to hold you down. But one thing I find out, when I accept Jesus as my personal savior, couldn't nobody stop me. And I was able to, able to become what you call uh, a, a, a journeyman machinist. And that's going all the way up to the top. When I let Christ into my life. And this is who he is. If people would only let him into their life. You could have anything you want in this, in this world. Why? Because God has appointed him earth over all things. The earth and the fullness thereof, they belong to Jesus. Nobody got no business being hungry in America. Why? Because the cattle of a thousand hills. And a lot of people think I want to be a, be a rancher with all them cattle. I don't have time to watch out all them cattle. But when I want some beef, I go buy it. And this is what he's trying to get the, 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 the listeners here to accept Jesus. You, you, if you're thinking of putting the angels over Jesus, your priorities are not right. He's greater than the angel. And God has right there in that verse, to, that's enough for us to just stop right here and go back home. God has appointed him heir. And if God appointed him heir over all things, who can take it away from him? But there is one that's going to try him and he's going to be defeated. And he's going to try us. But if we keep our hands in his hand, he can't stop us. We're on a winning team. Now, another thing about this. Let me go on a little bit further. Well, let, let, let's go to verse 3. Okay. Who being the brethren. We're still talking about Jesus. Who he is. Because undoubtedly, the one that uh, 
the author is talking to was thinking that the angels was greater than Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, here the writer is in verse 3 saying, and he's talking about his son, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. I hope we get in it. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sin and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. There's a lot of stuff in there. So let's go back to the first sentence. Who being the brightness of his glory. If you turn all the lights out in here, can you see anything? No. But when the lights are on. Christ had not already been here as a person, as God's son. But when God sent him during his dispensation, he turned on a light that you could see his son. And then when you see his son, who is it? Brightness of glory and the express image of his person. What do you mean, the express image? That's a company called Federal Express. Mm -hmm. And what Federal Express does, you order something. And Federal Express bring it to you, and when they bring it to you, here's what you order. Yeah. Jesus is the express of his Father. And then it talks about, that's the image is. Express means here is the package. Mm -hmm. And when it's talking about his image, when you see an image, you can see a, a, the, 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 the sun will show you a shadow, which is your image. Or you look in the mirror, that's not you in the mirror. That's the exact image of you in the mirror. Yeah. This is who Jesus is. The exact image of the Father. Yeah. But him and the Father still are what? The one. same individual. Right. Only God could do this. He's the express image. So these people that are looking over Jesus, looking at the angels, they're actually looking over God placing an angel higher than their maker and their creator. And, and this is what the writer is trying to get them to see. He's in his likeness of God and in the form of him. He's like, we know God is being God, but look, look, God loves us so much that God said, well, I'm going to do this and I made you, right? I'm going to make myself just like you. And I'm going to come down here and be with you. But you're going to see that I still got to hold my office up here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not present with God. I'm the same place everywhere at the same time. But I'm going to do something to you because you're the crown of my grave. I'm going to make myself just like you and come down there and be in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, right in your midst. The express image of his person. So when we see Jesus. We see God as a person. Mm -hmm. Is there some scriptures to back that up? Somebody run over to John 14 and 9. John 14 and 9. And Deacon Gibbon was praying tonight about for us to learn how to come and study because when you study and you become a disciple of Jesus, he teaches you stuff like this. Now, because Jesus, this, he's dealing with one of his disciples here, John 14 and 9. You have it, Sister Paul? Read it. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast I not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And, he, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? When he tell him, Philip, Philip, when you, you see me, you see the Father. You see the Father. Yeah. Only God could do this. And the geek teaching his disciples. And his disciples is learn a student. If you stand them, you're going you are learning about me, God personal. 
And my brother and my sister, you need God on your side in this world that we're living in. Yes, sir. We're not through in there. He said, and upholding all things by the word. How is he upholding all things by the word? How is this possible? Somebody go to Genesis 1 and 3. You probably already know. Genesis 1 and 3. You, thank you. There was no light until God said and that was in the beginning. I don't know how many millions of years ago when God said that and there was no light and God said let there be light. Look outside the window now. <laughs> that light still is. Why? Because he said it in his word. <laughs> and not only that, when he said it, light is going to stay here. Because he said, let there be light. My brother, my sister, ever what Jesus said, let happen in our life. No force can stop it. His word is what created light. And not only did his word create light, his word created everything that was created. Thank God that whatever he said back then is still in existence and it's going to be in existence until God says different. And, and not only that, it's God that's holding everything in his place. Everything God made, when you look up at the solar system, you look at light, you look at day, you look at night. And when I got born again, you all, when I started riding up and down the road at the changing of the season, Brother Jefferson, I used to be riding, I don't care when season change, I wasn't looking at no season changing. I'm just riding. But when I got saved, when the season started changing, I started looking at the leaves on the trees. That they used to be green, but in the fall of the year, they change colors. Yeah. Then when they get up into the wintertime, they shed out of that leaf. But when springtime comes, everything goes back. Only God could do this. Yeah. That has to be an explanation how this stuff happens every year during this season. There has to be a God somewhere. You can have a car out here. This car not going to start itself. And every year, man, my grass in my yard. <laughs> Sister Turner, when I go out there, the grass is dead. Yeah. Then you go out there in the spring of the year, and here it is, coming back alive. Mm -hmm. There has to be a force to, to make these things happen. And then people run around here in this world talking about, there is no God. Something have to make these things happen. Now, everything God made is working the way it's supposed to work, except man. Except man. Mm -hmm. We're, gonna have that. We're not going to have that. And if man can't see that there's a God, Lord have mercy. You can't see stuff in the city like you can see if you're a country boy. Oh, because when everything is in darkness, you go out on a dark night and you can look up in the sky and see all of that up there, man. Lord, have mercy. All you can say is what? There has to be a God somewhere. Go ahead. I want to tell you something. Uh, we talk about Jesus and God. Have you ever seen a son that looks exactly like his father? Nobody did that, but God, you yeah. know, he said, you know, yeah. look, look like one and other, just a younger virgin, you know? Yeah. Ain't nobody did that, but God. Right. Identical, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, you could have what you call identical twins, yeah. but the mother don't know the difference between the two. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Linda had two twin brothers. Mm -hmm. For a long time, I could not tell them apart. <laughs> now, after they got so 
up on an age, you know, one of them head started fiddling, and his body yeah. was a little smaller than the other. But up until then, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell them apart. Mm -hmm. But when we be up there and one of them walk through, the mama could call that name. Yeah. <laughs> one of them name was Early, another name was Jerry. <laughs> I wouldn't even call that name because I didn't want to call him by the wrong name. <laughs> but the mama knew the difference. Like you say, is they supposed to be identical twin, but there's something different about them. Yeah. Now you could tell them one had a mole. <laughs> I knew what the mole was. So. Now we're not done with this verse three, you all. There's some more goodies in there. Now he come down here, he holding power, he, everything is holding in his place because of the power that he has in that verse. Now when he had himself purged out of sin, why did he come to the earth? He was a reason that he came, that was a purpose that he came. He came because of sin. Mm -hmm. Now he come and purged our sin. What do you mean? God has said that the way, and this is what the writer is trying to get these people to see. You're worrying about angels. Sin is in the world. Yeah. And once sin is in the world, we got problems in this world. Now God is sending his son down here to purge the world of his sin. Clean up the world of his sin. How can he clean up the world of his sin? Now when sin came into the world, God said what? The wages. So the only way that sin can be paid for, somebody got to die. And if you die in your sin, that's the end of you. And God never intended that to happen. The man, God had it already figured out before we came here. So he sent his son to come down here to purge the world. Pay the price for our sin. He died in our place. Yeah. And once he died, he doesn't know long that he need to be here. So let's finish this. So after he come down here and purge the word of our sin, he went back and sat down on the right hand side. Of the majesty on high. Why are these times talking about the majesty on high? That majesty also is dealing with the high priest. See? Now, before Jesus came, this is why it was so much better for them, and they rejected what was better for them. Now, before Jesus came, they had to go before the high priest. Yeah. Now, was that saying forgiven? No. They sin was atoned for. Oh. Okay. God allowed this. I'm going to accept you under these conditions. But that sin would not forgive you. Because animal blood cannot wash away your sin. So God had a better plan than I'm going to reveal to you in his time. So when Jesus came and shed his blood, that blood covered your sin. And if he died for your wrongdoing, everything is paid for. He done bought and paid for us, and we need to start acting like we are paid servants of God. Yeah. God have done something for us to have this right. Yeah. And look how we act. We talk about how bad these children are. We don't know how bad God look at us. And right. right. our generation before us, when they come to the Lord's house, they knew how to praise God. Yeah, they did. They all down the street. Tear that old building up. <laughs> Dust flying up everywhere. Walks all over the place and didn't walk sting nobody. <laughs> you know why? Because what was going on in there was led by what? Spirit. The spirit of thank you, Sister Port. It was by the spirit. And when we get into the spirit of God, we got power. When I get up Sunday morning to preach, I was full of the spirit of God. Oh Lord, have mercy. That's what we come to church for to feel God's spirit. So we have to get ourselves prepared to come in here. The right. old saint knew how to praise God. Oh, it was a lot in that verse. Mm -hmm. He came and bought us. He paid for us. Paid for us. A price had been paid. And not only that, before he come, they want to hold on to the angels. They want to come on, hold on to the way that was before he came. Now, before he came, the high priest went in there. And, 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 and got their sins atoned for, but he had to go back when? Next year. Next year. Now, not only that, they could not, they could not, it was a limit on how far they could go in the holiest of holies. Yeah. Now, when Jesus came, 
in paradise of sin, that curtain was ripped. Now we got direct access to God, not once a year, every day. And this is what the writer is trying to get these people to see with blindness on. We're living in a world now with blindness. People are struggling. People are talking about how bad it is. Yeah, it's bad, but do I worry about how bad it is? I don't have to worry about none of this stuff. Because God can take care of his children. Let's go a little bit further, y'all. Verse 4. Be amazed. Now, this is what the writer, this is the point that he's trying to get over to his listeners here in verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. They was God's angels, but this one got a name that exceeds their name. His son. This is his son. And one thing about we love our son. When me and my wife got our children in no accident, both of those children, but we planned them. Get out the birth control pill. I want a son. And God blessed me with a son. That's what I wanted when we got me. I wanted a son. God wanted a son. And God has a son. And you don't put God's son is superior to anything God made. Now we're going to get into some controversy here, you all. Uh, because people, this is why I'm telling y'all something. We need to learn this Bible. Because some people are going to be trying to attack us. Right? There's some things said in here. Being made so much better than the angels. For he had by the heroes obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, this is God's son. Uh, and then some people said, now you're going to sit up here and talk about he come out of God. And now you're talking about he, he, he made. We need some explanation on that. Well, let's go to the fifth verse. We're going to try to dissect this thing a little bit. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. First of all, let me answer that. He didn't say that to none of the angels. And this have I begotten thee. Now, even though it talked about he made, he was made. He did not make him, he produced him huh, out of his own self. Yeah. Because somebody's going to say, well, if he made him, he made him just like he made Adam. No. He made Adam out of what? Dust. The dust. dust. But he produced his son by reaching inside of his own self. So we need to explain it when people come up with, to us with this ignorant stuff. Because we're living in a time now where they have more knowledge, but he's, even with more knowledge, they're going to be more what? Evil. And we need to be able to explain some stuff to some people. And again, I will be to him a father, and he should be my son. Not my daddy. <coughs> It's no daddy relationship here. It's his son. Yeah. Now, it's another thing on here. People will say, well, he got him his first, well, was not Adam his first son? He made Adam. He didn't make Jesus. Thou art my son. This day have I Begotten thee, I did not make him. I made Adam. None of us. After Adam, everybody else has a father. But Jesus is only begotten son. The only. Because he reached down in himself. This is what Jesus, I'm God the Father, I'm God the Son, and let me go a little bit further. I'm God the Holy Spirit. Only God could do this. Now, if they do not accept this, just turn your back on them. Because they don't want the truth. And that's the truth of the matter is. And again, I would be to him a father. And a father and a son relationship is, is something that's good. Not a stepfather. 
I'm his father. And he shall be to me a son. Did y'all know this world would be a whole lot better off if we wouldn't have so many daddies in the world we live in today? Say it again, Sister Turner. Anybody could be a daddy, but everybody can't be no father. Because another thing, dealing with these children that we are raising today, we talked about that a little bit last night, you need to be a father. And even in the Bible, in Ephesians 6, he said, Fathers, provoke not your children to what? Wrath. And that's how we talked about that last night. These children, in these days that we're living in, is different than we were. Uh, Brother Trotter, uh, I, I couldn't even think about saying things to my mama that these children would say to them and act it. Uh, uh, and, and, and mama just had to tell you to do something once. And if mama tell you to go out there and rake the yard or whatever to do, or clean up something, you, you go and you do it right. And, and not only that, if mama whipped you, right, and she done put a real good whipping on you. And you sitting up in your room. If mama come in there, you stop that mess. Yeah. Thank you, sister, because she will tell you in a minute. What is this? Boy, I give you some. Now, if you try that today, yeah. it's not going to work no more. They, thank you. It's because the law says it's child abuse. Yeah. And we living in a society now. Where they have made it law that if you put some wealth on your child, and you and your child is the only one have to live like this in this world now, and you start treating this child like this, you know what's going to happen if you go to sleep at night? You might not wake up that morning. So does that mean that we get? No, it means you got to go to God and ask, Lord, help me to raise my son up because I'm he's I'm his father, and I love him, Lord. Teach me how to raise my children in perilous days. And God will if you go to him and, and censor in your voice. Because that child is going to want to act just like the rest of the children. That's just normal. See, and people, and it's, it's our problem. We were playing baseball one day, didn't give uh, 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 and, and, and my, 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 I got a brother, man. He, he, he dead now. And he always oh, got himself in some trouble. We playing baseball, right? He hit with a chill been a singer and threw him out and he ran over the first baseman. <laughs> and the first baseman was about three years older than he is. And he got up, he was wearing my brother out. And I said, man, you don't hit him no more than hit him again. And then he had to deal with me and I was mad by this time, right? Yeah. Now we playing, at a, we playing in a field at somebody else's house. And the lady come out there and told me to stop. And I was just like, I didn't hear nothing. And you know what she said? If you don't stop, I'm going to call your mother. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> and that's the way people were back then. But they'll stand up and watch the children fight now. We're living in a mean, cruel world. And the world is not the same. But we want our children to be the same. Because when that lady told me I'm calling your mama, no, no. Because I know what mama would have done to me. It's a different word. But what I'm trying to get y'all to see is a father and son relationship. And we need God to help us to raise these children now. And this is what God said. This boy is mine. I'm his father. And he's my son. And not only that, it's me coming to see about you. You're my children. That's verse 5. This world would be a lot better off, like I was saying, if there weren't so many daddies in the world and we had more men that wanted to be fathers, raising their children up in the church. And again, verse 6, when he bring it in the, that's again, and again when he bring it in the first begotten into the world. Now, this go deeper than we think it is. When he brought in the first, not just the first begotten of the human race, he's the first begotten of anything that I made before I made anything. 
Me and the son was here. Yeah. Yeah. Did not he say in John, in the beginning, what the word in the word was with God and the word was God? Yeah. Now, and, and this is why I was getting tripped up, they can give him because I'm trying to go be in territory that I don't have no knowledge of. What was God and his son doing before creation? Only God knows. Only I was reading in the commentary why it was a Jewish writer that was trying to uh, say that Michael the Archangel was rivaling to be the Messiah was against what? Jesus. Well, I, I disagree with that. I know. But I also agree. Now, Satan wanted to take over and be God himself. Yeah. But Satan did not make his sin. No. But the, the Father and the Son made him. So this writer was really talking Yeah, this writer here. You know, yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm Jesus. telling you. See, like that's what she was saying. We have to be able to explain things better. Yeah. No, Michael was a good angel. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. God didn't have no problem with Michael. He had problem with Satan. Now, the only thing with Michael and Satan connected was that trying to Moses and Aaron 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 and, and, and Satan showed up. And, and Michael had to let him know, I'm coming on in the name of the Father. Uh -huh. Because Michael was no match for Satan. No, no. Yes, yeah, in the Bible. Is, is that? Yes, yeah, in the Bible. Really no, Michael. And they can give it an eye. Somebody else was other night when people were coming up here talking about, I'm going to. What they really said, they're going to do something to Satan. I don't forget what they said, but I heard what they said to correct them. Yeah. <laughs> You, you can't do nothing to Satan. No. And that was something in the Bible called they said they were going to chatter him and he whipped them neck. <laughs> Satan is not to be played with. No. No, Michael, that, that God, tall, military angel. Yeah. And when he sent him down there to check on Moses, he had to let him know, no, I'm, I'm coming in the name of God. He wasn't no man for Satan. No, he ain't no man for Satan. And we are not. And this is why Satan is having his way in this world because we're on his turf. And the only thing that, that saved us is God sent his son down Thank here. You. Thank you. And, and then when his son got done with his work, then God was not finished. He sent the Holy Spirit down here to help us. Through, through the scripture, especially the New Testament, Jesus, it shows that Jesus had more power than the angels. Yeah, yeah. Because when you start reading scripture where Jesus was, was getting rid of demons, yeah. they knew Jesus. They didn't know about no angels. No, yeah, they knew him. They knew Jesus. Yeah. They even told him one time, you're coming before time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean. It's, and they tremble. It, it, it's, all, it's all through scripture. You just yeah. got to pick it up. Yeah. And this is what the people, what they were trying to place the writers here. Well, they were simply rejecting Jesus. Yeah. And the writer here trying to let them know who he really is. Yeah. Now, going back to that verse 6, uh, and, and I want us to understand that. Again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, before anything else was made, Jesus was the first thing that was made. And, and actually, like I was saying, we, I, I'm not coming to saying he was made because God reached inside of himself. And got his own self. Right. Because see God. He had to. It, it was done when Jesus was. Jesus was with the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. From the time that they left Egypt. Oh yeah. But he was there. But as, in what? In the cloud. That was Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. In the five by night that was Jesus. But he could not reveal himself. Until it was time for him to make him known to the world. But he was here all the time. He was with Man. Jesus with the nation of Israel all the time. Even in the in going back to Genesis 1 and 3, when it was not, you have to look at this, it was not God. It was when Jesus said, let there be, then this when things start happening. You see, God is God all by himself. I mean, they get deep. We don't have to go to those depths, but you need to know these things. Jesus, that's why I said Jesus is the word. And whenever Jesus speaks into existence, the word he's speaking to him is let that be light. Let that be the sun. Let that be the, that was Jesus. 
And this is why I come. God is, is placing him over everything that he made. One of those scriptures said that. Verse 2, whom he had appointed heir over all things. He had to speak everything into existence. Going back to that verse 6, and he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. And here the writer is uh, thinking that the angels are superior to Jesus, which they are not. And another thing, the writer probably did not understand that Jesus was here all the time, but he had not been revealed or the words have manifested, made known unto the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now these angels knew who he was. Oh yeah. How do you know <laughs> that the angels knew who Jesus was? Uh, uh, you remember when, 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 when Jesus was born? Over in the book of Luke, mm -hmm. at his birth, the angels came and announced his birth. Yes. Yeah. And then after the angels announced Jesus' birth, and one angel was telling God's people where he was born. Now, this is me, you all, but I believe this from the depths of my heart. When that one angel was down here telling them where Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and, and you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. And, and this was Jesus being revealed. This was him being made known to the world, being born as a baby. And I could see the heavenly host of angels up there, witnesses what was going on down here, telling God, please, God, let us. Go down there and be part of this. Because it was just one angel, but the script says, suddenly, the heavenly host praising God in the height on earth, peace and goodwill. These are the angels coming praising God for his son being born into the world. They worship Jesus. We got to know who Jesus is. You know? yes. Yeah, the angels wanted to be part of this great celebration. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was great, my brother. And that's Luke. Y'all want to read it? Luke 2, 9 and 13. Luke 2, 9 and 13. 9 through 13. Yeah, Luke 2, 9 through 13. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon no, let him. Let me stop. There. Just one angel. Yeah. Just one angel this time. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. That's what the angels are doing. Who shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... That's it right there. That's there what was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Heavenly host. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. These are the angels coming praising God for him being born into this world we live in. Mm -hmm. And this is when he this is when he was revealed, manifested, made known unto the world. But he had been here all of the time. Before there was a world, he was here. Yeah. And I'm sitting up there, I keep telling myself, boy, get back into the lesson. Get out of that territory. <laughs> but you don't need to be in. Fool around there, you done had a stroke trying to go that deep. And, and verse 7, and the angels, he said, who make it his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. Uh, this is simply uh, the angels. He made them like a spirit, mm -hmm. like the wind. We, we can't see them like when Jesus was talking about the wind coming. 
An angel could be right in our midst, y'all. Yeah. And, 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 and we will never know it. And then he said, who making his angels a spirit and his minister of flames of fire. Now, flames of fire. Let me tell you something. When Jesus needed help in the garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed to God, God sent an angel from heaven, right? Do you know how long it takes light to get from heaven to earth? I said light. It takes light so many years, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, but this angel. Needed. Who? The angels are somebody. That angel left heaven. I think Jesus said, y'all can't even watch for me for an hour or something. Yeah. Now, before that hour was up, an angel had, Lord have mercy. I start trying. <laughs> so the angels are somebody. Yeah. They are something special. You know? And God sent his angels to help watch over and protect us. When you're laying down in your bed at night. Yeah. I got a little alarm system. That, I don't depend on that alarm system. Somebody know how to deprogram those systems. God has his angel to watch over all day. You ever look like you almost get, get hit in a car accident? Did y'all hear what Moderator Williams said? He said he was traveling and that car hit him. And he said when that car hit the rear end of his car, his car went into a spin. And he said he saw the 18 wheel get ready to hit him. And he said he called on the name of the Lord. And that quick, the Lord kept the 18 wheel from killing him. And I would like to think he had an angel to handle that situation. That's why he said they're like flames of fire. Yes. They can move with speed. Yes. Move faster than light known unto man. And this is who God is and this is who watching. Protect of us. No, they were, they, the, the angels they were talking about, they are somebody but they are nothing without Jesus. Right. And Jesus and God made the angels. Right. So give Jesus his dues. Yes. They are to assist him, right? Right. Thank you, Sister Porter. And said it out loud. Angels are to assist. Not superior over him, but they are to not only assist him, but whatever he tell them to do, they need to do what? What Mary tell them to do? Whatever you say do. Now, he don't have no problem with the angel. He might have some problem with us. That's right. <laughs> but whatever he tell the angel to do, they're going to do it. And we see now they got enough speed to get do it in a hurry. Man, we are so blessed, you all, with how God has set all of this stuff up to take care of us. Lord have mercy. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. <laughs> Not just forever. The writer go further than. And see, these things were messing with me, didn't give it. Now, I'm not, not, forever is enough. But is anything on the other side of ever? No. Now, he said forever and ever, like there's something on the other side of ever. That's what I'm saying. Now, you go to fool with stuff, you need to just calm down a little bit. Everlasting. Everlasting. You know, it's something, forever is one thing, but then there's another side of forever and ever. That's what the scripture said. They uh, yeah. scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, this scepter is a is a staff. Mm -hmm. It's a symbol of righteousness, mm -hmm. and, and that's what he's saying here. But unto us, thy throne of God is forever and ever. When God sent his son, he was righteous when he left he before that was heaven and earth. He was righteous 
beyond anything we could imagine. He was righteous with God. How is it that he was so righteous with God? Because he is God. Amen. A sceptre of righteousness is a sceptre of thy kingdom. We are part of, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are part of a righteous kingdom, you all. Yeah. That's such a blessing. And I don't care what condition this world gets in. We're supposed to be righteous. We're supposed to be righteous in the way we treat people. Right. We're supposed to be righteous. You could be a business person in all of your business dealings. You're supposed to be a righteous person on your job. You shouldn't be acting upon your job. You're a representative of who Jesus Christ is. That's right. Because he was righteous. Uh, and, and like I say, the whole time that Jesus was down here, he stayed righteous. Nothing happened to him that drove him from being a non righteous person. Now, something can get into us. Because I tell you, uh, there's one thing I, I never did like for nobody to do if I'm riding is flash the bird on me. Do y'all know what the bird is? Yes. You don't know? Yeah. But, but that used to, you can flash the bird and anything else on Jesus. This is, this is ignorance and this is nonsense. Jesus didn't have time to look at nothing like that. It could be some cars out here on this parking lot, and you fool around there, what they call it? That thing they call it? They got a name for it. Knife in it or something? When they put a long skull on it? Oh, the long thing on the... Scratch your car. Yeah, when they scratch it. They got oh. a... Key your car. Key your car. Uh -huh. That's a mess your day up. Yeah. He's not here tonight, and I don't, I don't think he would mind me saying this. He's not here tonight. Reverend Joe told me that when he got out of his house and went out there and found out somebody had taken his tailgate, he said it's good that he didn't catch them. <laughs> now, how would that look, a preacher? Somebody out there stealing his tailgate and he go out there with a shotgun and blew his head up. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, he's a preacher. Just to say you could do it. Yeah. But would you want to take a man's life well, a truck. Yeah. behind a tailgate out there? And then that could be some circumstances behind it. That's right. I mean, it's wrong in the way you look at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that I'm not justifying doing anything wrong. Let's say the man had a child at home with no food. That's not justification, but I'm just saying Jesus did not get caught up into nothing. He was righteous and he stayed righteous. Right. But things that happen to us will make us come out of a righteous mold that we're supposed to come in, that we're supposed to be in. Yeah. But not Jesus. This is what the writer is trying to, not Jesus. He was righteous before there was a world. He was righteous when him and his father made everything. He was righteous when his father sent him down and, and all he went through out on Calvary. How can a man sitting there on Calvary hadn't did anything but if he was hungry he fed you. If you were sick he made you well. If you couldn't hear him he could give you hearing. If you are blind he could get you. And while he out there they out there mocking him now if that would have been me you know what I would have said? I would have been like the sons of thunder. You know what the sons of thunder say? Father, rain down fire and brimstone on them. But since Jesus was so right with God, what did he say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they have done. That's being right, you all. And none of us is right like this. And that's why we have to stay on our knees asking God for his mercy. And for his grave. But this one, he was so righteous. A sceptical of righteous. And he's still right with God. Sitting up there with God making intercession for us. Doing things sometimes we know is wrong. Man, the son is greater than the angel. Verse 9. 
Lord, and he's talking about when he was here. That have love right here. That's when he was here. That's when he come to this evil world, you all, that we now live in. He still, while he was down here, going through all of this, seeing the world was messed up, even going up against Satan. When he was out there on the 40 days, uh, he stayed right with God. He handled that situation right. Satan fooled with him. He hadn't had nothing to eat in 40 days. <laughs> he was a human like us. Yeah. And then Satan going to tell you, I can turn it. Satan, man must not live by Bread alone. But every word of my father. That's a righteous man there. Yeah. He loved righteousness. And he hated iniquity. He hated sin. He hated the mess this world is in. This is Jesus, you all. Therefore, God, even that God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Lord have mercy. God anointed thee with all of gladness above thy fellow. Over the children that's now been inherited into the family. And when he see us messed up, he don't get upset because God anointed him with gladness. God who lived down here for 33 years he lived in a lawful, lawless society. But all the time he was down, he loved righteousness. And not only did he love right, he lived right. He hated to see sin. Not the people, he hated the sin that the people committed. Yet, in all of this going on, he continued to live right. Therefore, because when God saw his son, Come down here and put up with everything he had to put up with. That's my beloved son. You ever been to a football game and saw him on the 10-yard line? I'm talking about on, down, down there, the goalpost up here. Present here on the 10-yard line. He hit that sideline. And he leading everybody. And the gap is getting long. You sitting up in the stand. You can sit up and tell everybody, that's my son. <laughs> when God saw Jesus the way he was acting down here, that's my son. Now I'm going to anoint him. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to anoint him with gladness above all the fellow. God anointed him with gladness, knowing that he was superior over his own creation. He was superior over man. He was superior over angels. He was superior over everything God created. And this anointment is an anointment of gladness. And he has something that he could be glad about because he knew God's plan. One day, it's going to be, these are the words that's written in the Bible. One of these old days, we just hold on, y'all, and keep on trying to live right. Keep on depending on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One day, behold, the tabernacle of God is going to be with me. And we will dwell with him. And then one day we're going to be with him. And one day God going to wipe away all our tears. There's going to be one day no more death. No more sorrow, no more crime, no more pain. Why? Jesus so good about this because all of these former things, one day they're going to be passed away with. And I'm going to bring my family. I'm going to remove this heaven. I'm going to remove this earth. And I'm going to have something for my bride. And you know what I'm going to have for my bride? A new heaven. And a new earth. And when you get there, these former things that you have to deal with down here, they all passed away. God has something for us. And it was all made possible by his son. And they're going to compare an angel 
There's no comparison to the greatness of God's Son, who is Jesus Christ, who is God himself, who he ripped down inside his own self Amen. and produced him a son. It would be good if you could reach down in your own self and pull out a son, but God did not make us like that. Sometimes we do make them, sometimes they make us so bad. They act so bad sometimes to them. You don't say it to them, man, Lord, why did you give me this child? But not his son. He was the sceptical of righteousness before there was anything. And don't y'all try to go out there into that la la land. <laughs> it's a la la land out there. It's too heavy for us. We thank God for this beautiful lesson on tonight. We thank God for this lesson on how great his son is. We thank God that, that, that he made him and he appointed him over everything. And regardless of how bad things seem, like Jesus is still in control. And he wants us to be a, an express image of who he is. He wants to live inside of us and help save this world, make this world a better place. Because I don't care what nobody say. He's not going to come back. It's two things, theologically speaking. If a man got a daughter, she got to be a certain age before she can date and get married. And the other thing about before he come back, he know when the last soul is going to come unto him. And until that last soul come to him, he won't come back. But when the last soul give their life to him, he's going to come back and take his bride out of here. She's not old enough right now. And we thank God. We are the bride. We are the body of Christ. And we should learn so much from him. We are superior over the rest of this world. And when I'm superior, he don't want us looking down on nobody. But we are his children. That's right. We need to be just like his son when his son was down here on this love. He loved righteousness in a crazy, mixed up, evil world. Yeah, that's right. And he stayed right. And he want us to be as right as we possibly can. Father God, we come tonight thanking you for this great lesson. Thank you, Father, that for your son, how you do things that Man, the world cannot understand it. And even when we explain it to them, and you give us knowledge and wisdom to break it down, like we learned on this lesson, the world still rejected. Even these, the writer was having problems that they were preferring angels over thy son. Oh Lord, just help us to be who you have us to be in these last days. Help us to be the light of the world. Help us to be the city. This is the one here. Then most of all, Lord, when we mess up with thee, help us to come to thee with a true spirit and a pure heart. And ask you for forgiveness because your son came down here and he purged the world. He, he paid a price for all our wrongdoing. He shed his blood for the remission of sin. He paid the wages of sin, which is death. He died in our place. But he did not stay dead. He's sitting on majesty. We got a high priest sitting on your right hand. Yes. Help us to learn about the Old Testament. When the high priest, by the sprinkling of the animal blood, when he did get the okay to go in and meet you face to face, then you could take a report back to the people for one year. But when your son came, shed his blood, died, and went up to, back to heaven, now we got access to you, dear Master. Uh, we just thank you for your plan of salvation. Thank you for your son, and we thank you for thy Holy Spirit. Again, we come tonight, still praying for the sick and the shut in. Still praying for Sheila and the loss of her sister. Still praying for Sister Webster, Sister Gaston, 
and the rest of the sick and the shut in of this family and praying for every church door to stand up in thy name. So you're praying for the Taylor family, Jamie, Lord, and we're going to keep praying to you until you fix that situation. Because we know that they are able. Continue to bless Pastor and Sister Taylor. Help them to deal with whatever what they have to deal with. But one thing that we do know for sure, and I heard him teach it in his word, we are on a winning team. And when the finals say have been done, mm -hmm. we're going to come out victorious. Oh, yeah. Because of your son, Jesus Christ. All these things we're asking tonight, we're asking them in his name. The one that you have made heir over all of your creation. In Jesus' precious name, this is our prayer. Amen, and we thank you. All participants are unmuted.